Welcome to our lecture online. A few videos ago, we were faced with an interesting problem, a problem that introduced us to the binomial expansion or the binomial distribution, maybe a better way to say it. And the question was as follows. We had a test with five questions on the test, three possible answers for each question, and we we're supposed to take the test without reading the questions and reading the answers, essentially just purely guessing. And so we were interested in what would be the probability that we'd get one question right or two questions right or so forth. And we were also faced with some additional questions. So here were the five questions we were faced with and we're now ready to answer them. Although for the first one, we're going to need to be introduced with one additional concept. So it said, how many of the five questions will be answered correctly? Now here, when we go to the side, here we have the equation where we get the probability that x equals correct. And of course, x is the number of correct questions. Could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And this is how we're going to calculate it. We've done that before in a previous video. Here were the answers. The probability to get 0 questions correct was 0.132 or 13.2%. The probability of getting 1 correct was 0.329 or 32.9% and so forth. Notice that in our equation here we have P of S, which is the probability of success, and P of F, the probability of failure, meaning do we get the correct answer or the wrong answer. And then here's the cumulative percentages. Notice that it should add up to 100% when we add all these numbers together. All right, and also if we forgot what this means, here we have the definition of N over X like this, what that actually means and how to calculate it. So, going back to how many of the five questions will be answered correctly if you were to take the test and you're purely just guessing, and it turns out that is equal to the mean of that binomial distribution, well, that is equal to the number of tries times the probability of success. Now, the number of tries in this case, of course, there's five different questions, that would be five, and the probability of success, now notice that there's three questions, one of them is right, two of them are wrong, so the probability of getting the right question in each case would be 1 over 3. So that means that we get 5 over 3, or roughly 1.67. Now notice, of course, there's no such thing as getting 1.67 questions correct. It's either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 5, 4 or 5. But on average, it is expected we would get 1.67 questions correct. So most likely it be 1 or 2 questions. All right, now if we take a look over here, notice that the probability of getting zero or one question correct, we add up those two percentages, that would be 46.1%, and notice that the probability of getting zero, one, or two questions correct is 79%, and notice that the answer to the first question here is right in between those two numbers, so that seems to make sense that it's somewhere between one or two most likely. And then, of course, if an entire class of 30 students took the same test under the same conditions, just purely guessing, then notice all we have to do is multiply this number right here times 30, and that would be the number of questions correct in a class of 30 students. Probably the most likely scenario, so we have 30 times 1.67, and notice, so we have 1.67 times 30, that would be about 50 about equal to 50 questions correct out of a class of 30. That would be the expected thing. So if you give a test like this, five questions, three possible answers to 30 students, and at random they just fill in the blanks, you would end up with about 50 correct answers in total. Now, if we're going to calculate the probability that five are correct, we simply go here to our table here. Notice that probability is fairly small, it's 0.004. So that would be equal to 0.004, which is equal to 0.4%. So a very unlikely scenario when you're purely guessing that you would get all five questions correct. What is the probability of getting zero correct? Now it turns out since the probability of getting them incorrect is higher than the probability of getting correct, this would be a higher probability. And sure enough, notice it's 0.132. So that would be equal to 0.132 is equal to 13.2%. So notice that because the probability of having a question answered correctly by purely guessing is smaller than the probability of getting it wrong, notice the difference in the probability of getting all five of them correct or getting all five of them wrong. 
a big difference in probability. And finally, again, if we're trying to figure out the probability of getting either 0, 1, or 2, 2 or less correct, then all we have to do is add up these first three probabilities. And notice when we add them up, we get a probability of 79%. So, if you're going to take a test like this and purely guess for all five of the questions, there's a 79% probability you'll get either zero, one, or two questions correct. And that is how it's done.